In the beginning, there was nothing. Not the nothing we think of, but a boundless, formless void. Imagine an emptiness so profound that it held the potential for everything. It was a canvas of pure possibility, a realm untouched by time or form. This was the primordial state before creation, a state of pure potentiality. The book of Genesis calls this void Tehom, the deep. It was a place of mystery and silence, a cosmic womb waiting to give birth to the universe. There was no light, no sound, no movement, only the presence of God hovering over the face of the deep. It is difficult for our finite minds to grasp the concept of nothingness. We are beings of form and definition, accustomed to the boundaries of time and space. But in that formless void, there existed a profound truth. Within nothingness, everything is possible. The void was not an ending, but a beginning, a pregnant pause before the grand symphony of creation. It was a testament to the infinite creativity of God, who, from this blank slate, would paint a masterpiece of breathtaking beauty and complexity. And then God spoke. Let there be light, he said, and light pierced the darkness. This was not merely the light of the sun, which had yet to be created. This was the light of divine consciousness, the light of awareness. It was the light of understanding, banishing the shadows of the unknown. With the arrival of light, the void was transformed. It was no longer an undifferentiated mass, but a space defined by the presence of light and the absence of it, darkness. This act of creation marked the beginning of duality, the interplay of opposites that would shape the universe. Light in its purest form represents knowledge, truth and the divine. It is the spark of consciousness within each of us connecting us to the source of all creation. When God said, let there be light, he was breathing life into the universe, infusing it with his divine essence. The creation of light was not merely a physical event, but a spiritual one. It was a declaration that the universe was not an accident, but a deliberate act of creation, born out of love and purpose. And in that light, we see the first glimpse of God's grand design. On the second day, God separated the waters. He created a vast expanse, a firmament to divide the waters above from the waters below. This act represents the establishment of order and structure within creation. The chaotic waters, symbolic of the formless void, were now contained and defined. The firmament, often interpreted as the sky, represents a boundary, a separation between the earthly realm and the heavens. It is a symbol of God's power to bring order from chaos to impose structure upon the formless. This separation is not meant to divide, but to create a harmonious balance. The waters above the firmament may be seen as the spiritual realm, the dwelling place of God, while the waters below represent the physical world. This division highlights the interconnectedness of the spiritual and the material, the seen and the unseen. Just as the firmament holds the sky and the sea in perfect balance, so too does God maintain order within the cosmos. This act of creation reminds us that even amidst the apparent chaos of life, there is an underlying order, a divine plan that holds everything together. Section 4, Earth Emerges, A Tapestry of Life Begins. The third day, witnessed a momentous event, the emergence of land. God gathered the waters below the firmament and dry ground appeared. This separation of land and water was not merely a geographical event, it was the birth of an ecosystem, a cradle for life to flourish. With the land came forth vegetation, plants and trees bearing seeds and fruit. The earth once barren was now teeming with the potential for life. This act of creation speaks to God's abundance, his desire to fill the world with beauty and sustenance. The emergence of plant life signifies the beginning of the food chain, the interconnected web of life that sustains all creatures. It is a testament to God's foresight and wisdom, his understanding of the delicate balance required for life to thrive. 
The creation of land and vegetation on the third day marks a pivotal moment in the Genesis narrative. It is a transition from the formless to the form, from the abstract to the tangible. It is the dawn of a new era, an era of life and growth. Section 5. Celestial Choreography, The Dance of Time and Space On the fourth day, God turned his attention to the heavens. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars, setting them in the firmament to give light to the earth. These celestial bodies were not merely sources of illumination, but also markers of time and seasons, guiding the rhythms of life on earth. The sun, a radiant ball of fire, became the ruler of the day, while the moon, with its gentle glow, governed the night. The stars, scattered across the vastness of space, served as celestial signposts, aiding navigation and inspiring wonder. The creation of the celestial bodies reveals God's mastery over time and space. It highlights his intricate design, his ability to orchestrate the movements of heavenly bodies with precision and purpose. The sun, moon and stars are not merely random objects, but integral parts of a grand cosmic dance. This act of creation also speaks to the importance of cycles and rhythms in life. The sun's daily journey across the sky, the moon's monthly phases, the changing seasons, all point to a universe governed by order and regularity. <laughs>